aware, nor for causes already explained to you have they in themselves the possibility of reflecting that their remote ancestors of various past ages, who were much more normally formed into responsible beings, must have racked their brains, as is said, not a little, to discover means for minimizing the time spent on this inevitable being necessity of feeding themselves with products. And having found such apparently expedient methods, they, every time, after a brief trial of them, eventually became convinced that these products of whatever kind and however they might be preserved always deteriorated with time and became worthless for their first food. And hence they ceased to employ these methods in the process of their ordinary existence. As a parallel to this contemporary means of preserving products for one's first being food in hermetically sealed vessels, let us take as an example that means of preserving which I personally have witnessed in the country Moral Plessis. It was just at the time when the beings of the locality of Moral Plessis were vying in everything with the beings of the country Tikliamish, and were engaged in a fierce rivalry with them, that the beings of all other countries should consider their country the first and foremost center of culture. Just then, it was that they invented, among other things, something similar to these American preserves. Those beings of Marau Plessy, however, preserved their edible products sealed hermetically, not in poison-exuding tin cans, such as the contemporary beings of the continent America use, but in what were then called Sikarerenian vessels. Those Sikarenian vessels in Marau Plessy were prepared from very finely ground what are called their mother of pearl, yolks of hen's eggs, and a glue obtained from the fish named the Chusna sturgeon. These vessels had the appearance and quality of the unpolished glass jars now existing there on your planet. In spite of all the obvious advantages of preserving products in such vessels, Yet, nevertheless, when certain beings with reason in the country Maral Plessy can stated that in those beings who habitually used products preserved in this way, there was gradually atrophied what is called organic shame. Then, having succeeded in widely spreading among the other ordinary beings information about this constatation of theirs, all the other surrounding beings similar to them gradually ceased to employ this method, and eventually it was so completely dropped from common use that even the knowledge that such a method had ever existed failed even to reach the fifth or sixth generation after them. On this continent Asia, there have existed throughout almost all the ages all kinds of methods for preserving edible products for a long time. And even now, several of these methods exist there which have come down to the contemporary beings from their very remote ancestors. But of all these methods, not one was so harmful for the beings themselves as this method invented by these contemporary beings of the continent America, namely the preserving of products in poison-exuding tin cans. Even this device for preserving products hermetically sealed so that without being exposed to the effects of the atmosphere, they should, as it were, escape the process of decomposition, exists among certain contemporary Asiatic groups. But they do not all have recourse for this purpose to the aid of these poison-exuding American tin cans. At the present time on the continent Asia, only what is called sheep's tail fat is used for this purpose. Sheep's tail fat is a product which is formed in a large quantity around the tail of a certain form of two-brained quadruped being named there sheep, breeding everywhere on the continent Asia. In this sheep's tail fat, there are no cosmic crystallizations harmful for the common presence of a three-brained being, and it is itself one of the chief products for the first food of the majority of the beings of these general groups on the continent Asia. But as regards the metal 
from which these contemporary beings of the continent America prepare cans for the preservation of their products, however completely they may be isolated on the inside from the influence of the atmosphere, they also, after a definite time, like the contents of the cans, give off from themselves various of their active elements, some of which are very, as they express it, poisonous for the common presences of beings in general. These poisonous active elements which issue from tin or similar metal, remaining in hermetically closed cans, are unable to volatize into space, and in time, meeting among the elements of the products within these cans certain elements which correspond to them by what is called kinship of class by number of vibrations, fuse with them according to the cosmic law named fusion and remain in them. And together with these products, of course, afterwards enter into the common organism of the beings who consume them. Besides preserving their products in these poison-exuding tin cans so harmful for them, your contemporary favorites grouped on this continent America furthermore preserve them preferably in raw states. The beings of the continent Asia always preserve all their food products roasted or boiled because according to this custom which reached them from their remote ancestors, Products preserved in this way do not decompose so rapidly as when raw. The explanation is that when a product is boiled or roasted, there is induced an artificial what is called chemical fusion of the several active elements of which the fundamental mass of the given product consists, thanks to which fusion Many active elements useful for beings remain in the products for a comparatively much longer time. I again advise you to become thoroughly and particularly well acquainted with all the kinds of fusion proceeding in the megalocosmos with the chemical as well as with the mechanical. Knowledge of this cosmic law will greatly help you, by the way, to represent to yourself and well understand why and how these numerous and varied formations are in general produced in nature, and how what is called a permanent fusion of elements is obtained in products from boiling or roasting, you will clearly understand if, upon reflection, you grasp merely the process which occurs during the artificial preparation of prosphora. Prosphora, or bread, is in general made everywhere by beings who are aware of its sacred significance. Only your contemporary favorites regard its preparation without any consciousness of its effect, but merely as a practice automatically transmitted to them by inheritance. In this bread, the crystallization of cosmic substances is also obtained according to the law of Triamazikamno, the substances from the following three relatively independent sources serving as the three holy forces of this sacred law, namely, the holy affirming or active principle is the totality of those cosmic substances composing what your favorites call water. The denying or passive principle is the totality of the substances composing what your 